What's up guys? Welcome back to the fourth quarter finish. And my goodness, was that a week one to remember. So we have a couple games that we're going to talk about today. I know that one that's on Braden's mind is the Monday night football game that just happened between the Ravens um, and the Raiders. Yeah, and then, crazy. And then Austin has some Saints Packers news that he wants to distribute. And I just have some general information that I thought was interesting about the league this year. So let's dig into it. Let's talk about it. This is the fourth quarter finish. So that Monday night football game was fucking crazy. I have not seen a Monday night football game like that in week one in a long time. Um, I had homework going on while that game was going on, and let me tell you, that game, I immediately put the homework to the you side. You still have the game on your TV and your... Listen, we, we so. always have. Oh, it was... It's football's always, always here. <laughs> that was absolutely insane. So, if I don't know if any of you guys didn't see the game. Just a quick rundown on the last like minute and a half, two minutes of the game, because this shit was crazy. So, Raiders get it in overtime. They drive down the field. They throw an interception into the end zone. The Ravens get it back. Then Lamar Jackson fumbles it. Then the Raiders get it back. They send the kicking team onto the field, get a delay of game. So then the offense I, comes back onto the field. I think that was a whole ploy. The I don't whole, know. The whole sending the, kicking team, sending the whole kicking team out and then being like, Getting the delay game because like oh, you're the, it's, it, is, it is professional football like it is a professional football league you don't just be like where'd the kicker go I straight up think they fucked up no I'm uh, I, you can you can say that up. but I don't know I think I, he had I think there's a little bit of something going on there but maybe but I, I anyway, think there was some mind games for sure maybe but any, anyway so after the delay game. Raiders offense comes back out there, and then Derek Carr just runs back 20 fucking yards and just heaves it to this guy way down the field, and then they score a touchdown and win it over time. Anyway, it was crazy, but um, thanks to actually take away from this game, I think the Raiders are going to be really good this year, and I think you don't have to worry too much about the Ravens. Um, from last year, Lamar Jackson didn't struggle a lot throwing the ball this game. He was actually he actually looked more yeah, impressive throwing the ball yeah. this game than he did running the ball because the problems this game were him fumbling, which was him running the ball. He fumbled once in the pocket and one running the ball. So if he didn't have those fumbles, they would have won that game. And his throws were spot on that game. Well, I was gonna say it actually looks like in the off season it looks like Lamar Jackson worked on his throwing mechanics because it looked a little bit different on tape when I was watching. I'm like, oh, okay, he's got a little more zip to his passes now. It doesn't a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's he's rely he's he's using more precision accuracy than he has in the past. So it was good to see not him you know, relying on his legs for the entire game yeah, to sure. win the games. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And the whole thing about um, the Raiders are, like, a good team, I, I think they are going to be a decent team this year. Um, my thing this year is when you win the turnover battle, oh, yeah, you, you have such a higher chance of winning these games nowadays. Because yeah. what you do is you capitalize on those opportunities, and if you don't, then it's where you feel you, know, you lack – but um, when you win those turnovers, it's key. And I think um, the Raiders, you know, capitalized on those turnovers in that game. Yeah. That's why I thought this game was so crazy, though, because they had three turnovers, basically, simultaneously. And none of them did anything with it except the very, very end. This shit was just crazy. Like, uh, an example of, like, turnover battle that was, like, another crazy game was the Tampa Bay Cowboys game. Like, I don't know how Tampa won that game, considering they lost a turnover margin. Four to one, and the one turnover that, that the Cowboys did have wasn't even a bad throw by Dak. It just went through CD Lamb's hands again. I don't know why that guy can't catch it in tight in tight spots, but it's just crazy. Question to you guys: Game of the week ball. What game does it go to? Uh, I mean, obviously, I'd go Monday to Monday Night, Night Football, football game. game. I think the Monday Night Football. <laughs> was, <laughs> you was, you that can't. That was that was the craziest. Well, game. What was the other game that went to OT? It was the, the Vikings, Bengals. The Bengals Vikings. Vikings, Vikings. Vikings game. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good game as well, but it just doesn't match. <laughs> it doesn't match. No, at the all. energy. The energy. Monday Night Football, national television. I mean, the energy was insane in that oh stadium too. With, oh my God, the new stadium. It, oh, the new stadium. The fans being back. John Gruden Las on Vegas, the sidelines. It, all these bets going on. Monday Night Football. Football. What a great atmosphere. It really was a great atmosphere. And not only that, but amazing. I think that that was a potential look at the playoffs right there. That was some, that was the playoff intensity that you, you'd normally expect. Other than the turnover margin, I mean, the stadium was That gets amped. cleaned up. It, 
I mean, it was two teams that are really looking like possible playoff candidates. I'm still not sold on the Raiders yet, though. Hold, and you can hold me to it, all right? Still not sold on the Raiders. I think that they have a lot of lot of holes that they need fixed, especially on their defensive line. But, well, and the Raiders, you know, they have you have Derek Carr. Um, you got who else? Josh I mean, Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Yeah, they're running Jacobs. back, but he's you know last and year. And Darren Waller. Yeah, they're all that's where I was. That was where I was going. And Darren Henry Waller. Rice. Yeah. Henry Ruggs is he's, he's new. He's, he's like new. He, he's got the speed, but he doesn't have, have his any, route You don't have those veterans. You have, you have Waller, and who was targeted. I don't know how many times. At least, at least he was double it digits was like 12 for sure. <laughs> times. It was and crazy. And you shut, shut one person down, you know. You get to see how this team actually reacts. So I'm yeah. curious to watch them going forward. Absolutely. And uh, going into that, I think, you know, there was one team. I don't, I don't know their names, but it seems like they actually took a playoff team and absolutely destroyed them. I don't know. Are you talking about the Saints? I, I don't know. I, you might know it a little bit better than I do. <laughs> All um, right, I can jump into this game just because, yeah, it was – I, I was actually, I went, I was at my girlfriend's house, we were eating dinner, and they had the game on. I was like, can we please put the Saints game on? And I witnessed one of the best hopeful games for a Saints fan you could ever watch. You have Jameis Winston starting, who's been a while. Last time he played a whole season, he threw more picks than he did touchdowns. And so now, he comes out, he had five touchdowns, zero picks. That's just a big hopeful for me. Okay. I like, I like to look at that. 38-3, final score, amazing game. Um, I don't know why the Packers may have played poorly. I know the Saints defense is supposed to be pretty good. And they did play very well. Um, but, you know, you don't just shut down the last year's MVP like you did. No. no something's it, going on. I, I think the man has jeopardy on the brain. I, I think he's got jeopardy on the brain. I think he wants out. I mean, it was all off season we heard about it. That yeah, Rogers like wants out. He's still pissed about Jordan Love, and the Packers are in a bind. Did get some playing time. He got some playing time. The only one who converted third down. Everybody didn't that convert is. a single third down. Jordan Love goes in there. Boom. Third down third conversion. Third down conversion. He then gets to the end zone, throws a pick. Yeah, in the end zone. Well, I, I, but, but well, they won compared to two. Right. So. Right. Um, so. I'll just say that the Packers ha are in a terrible position right now. First off, they're in cap hell. So when you're in cap hell, you can't do much to help the offense or defense. Right. You just have no money to spend. Yep. Second off, when you have a star quarterback and you betrayed him by by drafting a first-round quarterback, yeah, without telling him, that's not very good. S second, I mean, third, you have Jordan Love, who's not looking too good so far in his development. He's never played a real... He, he's, really, he, like, from, from what I've heard from the practice reports is that Jordan Love is not impressing. The, you know, normally in training camp you hear those, those rookie QBs, the Trevor Lawrence, the, right. the Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, right? You hear all the talk. Oh, look at this throw. There has been zero chatter or good things said about Jordan Love's training camp so far, which is definitely concerning. So the Packers are in that bind of... Of well, we have to we have to play Rodgers, and Rodgers can just give him a you, giant middle finger. You hate to say he threw the game though. There's just there's no way. It's way too early to say you that. You can't. You can't. It's way too early. I I that. I think it was chance. Well, but you look at you it's look at chance. Aaron Jones, who didn't <laughs> produce his usual numbers. You you look at defense defensively. Who's the Packers? You know, aren't the strongest. Is Darius team. Smith and they. But, have, it's 30, 38 points against Jameis Winston. I I agree. I I think I think it was a bad game in general. I mean, let's just, just say this: the NFC North got their butts handed to them this weekend. I think the NFC North is 0 and 1 completely. Yeah, none but yep. one. Yep. It, so I mean, it was a bad week in general. But I will say this: it, the Packers looked bad, bad. They their defense was. Yeah. I mean, the Bears' defense didn't look good either. As, I mean, as much credit I want to give open. to the Saints. The Packers did play poorly. Poorly. Like, they played they poorly play. all four phases. That is as what I'm looking at right now. Even though you know the whole division went 0 1, I don't see them making the playoffs. And it's just, I mean, obviously you know the Packers, they obviously can make a shitty run. Like it, 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 it happens. Yeah. And the, the Saints also usually their home openers. Sean Payton is smart with that play calling. And he has ways to, you know, just get his team off and get a win. That's just normal. They did it last year, and um, it really helped him going forward. So, you never know. Like, Packers could bounce back and have a great season. Yeah. I think one thing to take away from this game is 
don't like, like I, like I don't think we should make like huge deal about this yet because yeah. it's the first game of the season, we and can. a lot of times, first game of the season can be just a complete lie, and it could just completely change the rest of the season. On that note, though, I think week two is going to be a very big tell because. Yes. The Packers host the <laughs> Detroit Lions and they get their asses kicked again. We're gonna know. We're gonna know. <laughs> they're um, they're in some trouble. So they're in some trouble for um, sure. But again, I think the Saints played their asses off, and I think the Packers got completely just just knocked over in the head and just like did not was not ready to play that game at all. I think the best way to relate this game was Tampa Saints last year, thirty eight to three, exact same score. Yeah. Almost the exact way that's the game I, that's, went. That's what I was Both mm-hmm. quarterbacks played like shit. Um, the entire opposite team, uh, opposed to the Saints, played like shit. Tampa, Green Bay, both played like shit. Mm-hmm. And I think I think we just gotta wait for the rest of the season to see how it really pans I mean, out. And, but the Saints and, look good. And I want to put this out there: Jameis only threw 148 yards. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, he he had a great five touchdown game, but yeah. you only threw 148 you, yards. You look That's, at the numbers a little deeper. In right. I mean, that just tells you right there how bad the Packers were. You throw 140 yards give up and give points. up five TDs. Yeah. That's atrocious. No, I agree. But. You know, going going off of that, I'll just say that it looks like so far the defenses are definitely looking like they're a step behind all the offenses. I mean, across the league. I, I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but it just seems like there's a lot of scoring going on and, and defenses are kind of struggling. It's, it's the first week. It's, I think if you give, you give the defense some time to, you know, watch current film of people's last weeks, you know, I think you can find, you'll dial in. I feel like this happens every year. Where yeah. you know big games mm-hmm. happen, high scoring games happen. The early, I early there weeks. was a couple of defenses who stepped up. Yeah, one you of know, them being the Rams. The the Rams. I mean, the Rams still as good as they are. Aaron Donald had maybe <coughs> one sack. He had one sack. Yeah. One sack. And I mean, that's the whole thing is they they the Rams didn't have that many turnovers. I think it was what <coughs> two two pick, one pick for Dalton, no uh, fumbles. Number. So, I, mean, I believe it was only one pick. Yes. One pick, yeah. And no fumbles against the Bears offense. So I mean It wasn't the red zone though. That was pretty yeah, big. Yeah, and that was the what first drive of the game. But yeah. going off of that, you know, it's it's to me it's telling and especially one stat, and that is fourth downs. I mean, I've never seen it where this many teams go for it on fourth down, especially in the first week. Yeah. I mean, it was twenty seven fourth downs attempted in just week one across the league. And not only that, but there was a lot of fourth downs going on. I mean, even last year, I you can see you know coaches being a lot more aggressive, aggressive. with fourth down calling. Yeah. and I think that's a, it's it's huge when you you know going forward, you know just in general how you know these offenses play. Do they play towards the fourth down? Like, are they going to run another play on the fourth right. down? Can you take that into account? You know, based on their position on the field, if they're on their opponent's side or their own side. You know. Well, and and going off of that again. I hate going back to the Saints game again, but they went for it four times, and they were up thirty-eight to three. So and I, mean, they, I think they converted on all of them. They they did. They went four for four. So I mean, that just tells you is how much how much confidence offenses have in the league right now, and that's that's telling. I mean, the league week one went forty-four percent. I mean, that, that's four downs. Like, that's fourth down. That's pretty good for fourth down. That's, yeah, that's high. Normally, in the past, it was like around 20, 25% average. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, just going off of that, last year there was 396 all of last year, fourth downs. This year, they're on pace for 436 fourth downs attempted. I don't think it'll be that. I think it's just week one. I really do. I think people are trying to establish themselves. I think a lot of people just don't know because last year, first of all, it was COVID year, so True. really wacky year. Nobody True. knew what was going on, and this is the first yeah, like reg- by all your wins. Yeah. yeah, like this is the first year that like everyone's like kind of getting the fir- like the first time to get to see everyone with their fans and like what their team like really really looks like and what they're capable of, and a lot of people just kind of. Really want to get a win out of week one, so a lot of people are just being really, really aggressive week one. I don't think it's to be like that every year. Come a little bit more down, be a little bit more conservative, and then we'll ramp back up in playoffs. That's usually what happens, anyways, uh, in regular uh, seasons. I like your point with that. I just, I still think, you know, I think it, the aggressiveness is way high. with with no, you know the addition of you know another game this year. You know, you're gonna find you gotta find ways to win win games. So. Yeah, exactly. You never know who you know who's gonna make the playoffs, and um, you gotta if you're um, if you're 
running for that wild card spot, and he, every game counts. So. Exactly, and and like I said, going off of this is now the technically biggest season of NFL football ever, and they yep. they broadcast it like that all the time. Yeah. Um, but just going off of that, we I don't know if you guys agree with this or not, but this could almost be looked at like preseason week four. I mean, except it does affect your regular season statistics, but I mean, a lot of teams just now are still getting. They're, you know, experimenting. They're, they're experimenting, they're getting things together, yeah. and I think that's why, and I think the Packers game was a fluke. I think no. the Packers are going to come out it's strong. Not, it's not a fluke. You can't, uh, you can't have that be a fluke. Moving on to the Black Packers Saints yeah. game, that, that was not a fluke. At me and Austin don't believe that. Anyways, okay. one more thing I want to touch on before we end this is which division is the best in the league? And I think we all agree, maybe, that it's the NFC West. The NFC West is tough. The, the Cardinals... Dismantle the Titans. The Seahawks went into Indy, who had one of the best defenses last year, and made them look like they're defense. bitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you had the freaking Fortniteers go to the lines and kick them around like like they're little kittens for the entire game. Yep. So for the fourth quarter, I admit the Lions had a lot of fight in them. So give them that. So Fortniteers, if you had to put them in a rank, they'd probably be the weakest right now because couldn't quite finish it off hugely, but they still won the game. And lastly, you had the Rams, and the Rams look scary good. They do. Uh, they do. With Staff, I don't know. With, with Matthew Stafford back there. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know if you guys saw that game. The Rockets. But when when Stafford went out there at the first play of the game and threw a sixty yard bomb yep. touchdown on his first play, that was his first pass of the entire time on the Rams. He is good. saying, "Fuck you, Goff." I am going to carry this team to the Super Bowl this year, and I'm going to do it with a big ass arm. Yeah, I didn't and think anybody would be the Rams right now. I, I, the Rams look scary. Their defense, when they saw that, they went crazy. The, their defense is probably, to this point, the best in the league. Oh, Aaron I mean, Donald's Jay, considered the number one defense player every well, year. Well, the thing about it is, is Jalen Ramsey had, at like I said, we, addition. we didn't really talk about this a ton, but Jalen Ramsey's addition to that Rams defense, a six-one corner that's two hundred pounds. You can blow up wide receiver screens yeah. all day long. Well, and you saw it in that game is Demir Bird, who's only five foot nine, one hundred and eighty pounds. He, he was thrown. It was not. It was insane. I've never seen a DB have that much of an impact yeah. on a game. But Jalen Ramsey is there. He's right. he's number one corner in the league for sure. There's nobody I've seen been able to do that before. The scariest thing about the Rams is that that was week one. Yeah, and they they looked ready. They to have the. Another 16 games to gel perfectly in offense, and for Stafford to really build a rapport with all of his weapons, yeah. and he has a lot of weapons there compared to what he had the Lions. They look scary. We good. we encourage you guys to go watch some. Go of those watch the tape. Watch the tape and watch Stafford absolutely do his thing. We've been seeing it since he was a Lion. He pulled went to the Rams, and it's the same old, same old. Oh yeah, for sure. It's it's and. Oh, uh, if you want to talk about the Bears side too, real quick. I I don't have anything to really say about it. Um, to to be honest, it, it was just an absolute mess. Um, they looked unprepared from the start. I think their offense actually looked okay. To be honest, Mo- David Montgomery looked like he was a true top ten back in the league. He you had still a, believe in Andy Dalton be the number one quarterback there. I think Andy Dalton is serviceable, but I would say he's not the best quarterback on the roster. Okay. I think everybody in that organization knows that Justin Fields is the number one quarterback. He had – there's a play, and I, I encourage you to go watch the tape. His first pass of his NFL career was Aaron Donald dead straight in his face, about to sack him, and he made a perfect spiral to a wide receiver screen. That, to me, showed he's right. You, that's the best defensive player in the league yeah. every year, and he had no no – Fear in him when he made that throw. It, I was like, okay, yep, that tells me everything I need to know. Right I think here. the big thing with that is that Matt Nagy needs to make a decision soon because if gonna he does the it, they're going to lose a oh. lot of games in the locker room. The and locker room. The biggest thing with it is that I agree with you. I think Justin Fields is ready, but if he doesn't think he's ready, he needs to sit him, and he doesn't need. He shouldn't play him like he's playing him right now because right now he's using like a gadget guy, like yep. like um, Taysom, Hill. Taysom Hill, exactly, and. We've seen that last season. A lot of people tried to do that with like quarterbacks that they didn't want to play quite yet. They tried to do them as like gadget guys, and it 
just did not work because they were battling for the position the entire time, and it didn't work for the team. You got to go with one guy the entire season, let the other guy sit. I just don't think that will work for them. But if you have anything to add to that, Austin, the whole thing about like Justin Fields and making making that decision, um, you got you got you. It's a clean slate right now in, in, the, in the NFC North. Yeah, it is absolutely. all one across the board. Exactly. If you're the Bears, you might. If the Packers don't perform, if they look like they did, then you got a chance. You, you, you can ch- You ch- you chase down that number one spot in the division. You can have a playoff. Not to mention, I think so. It, there's this NFC North battle against Green Bay and, and the Lions yeah, next week. Yeah. So yeah. whoever loses, that's going to be zero and two. Mm-hmm. So if the Bears can get one and one, they'll have a Leg up at least against one and, team. And I'd say currently the, the rankings for the North, even though they're all 0-1, it, it, it's pretty pretty simple to me. I think that the Packers are still number one. Even though they look terrible, yeah, I just I fair. think they have the most talent on their roster. Yeah, other than wide receiver, other than Devontae Adams. Hey, the Vikings have talent. The though. Vikings are my second team because their offense is it's really, scary. really scary. I don't like the Vikings. I, they, have, I, they have Adam so, Thielen. They have... Justin Jefferson. No, Dalton I agree. Cook. I agree. But what I saw against the Cincinnati Bengals, who are not a good team. I'm sorry. The Cincinnati Bengals, the only good part about their team is Joe Burrow and that offense because he's, he's fucking stuck. Their defense, it ain't it. And the Minnesota Vikings could not do anything the first half. Uh, they didn't look good. And trust me, I have Justin Jefferson on my fantasy, so I was pretty pissed about it. So, yeah. I, I think that, like I said, I think the, the Vikings have a really good offense. I think they're still gelling. I think they're still getting getting in things. Yeah. Their offensive line, again, you got to remember, I is still coming together. together. We'll see. Right. So, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. And, you know, if you guys stick around, then you might just find out what our thoughts are down the road. Maybe we're wrong, maybe we're right, and maybe you guys can leave it in the comments what you guys think. But I think that's going to wrap up this video today, guys. Um, Like I said, please like, share, comment, any any concerns, questions you have, anything you maybe want to talk about next video. But... Yeah, debate with us, argue with us, Uh, do it, you know, comment sections there, and... Feel free. Tell us who you think the best division is. You probably will yeah. say the NFC West, like we just did. <laughs> but I, I don't think but if you do another division, I'd be very interested to hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's let's talk some football next week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye, guys.